Welcome to another Friday Classic Hymn. Today we're talking about another favorite, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Now, I only ever knew the chorus of the song because we didn't really sing this in church, but I knew Michael W. Smith's version, and he only did the chorus. And so I got to know the chorus very well, but I never really knew any of the verses. And so when I started to learn these verses so that I could sing them for today's song, I really was impressed with them. What lovely words. Do you know the song? Do you have memories of hearing it, singing it at a certain church? Please share them in the comments below so that we can share in your joy. And if a word or a line from the song strikes you today and is meaningful to you, why don't you share that down below as well? That'll be great to see how the song touches you. And so let's get into the history, as we always do. The author of this great song is Helen Lemmel. She was born in 1864 in England and moved with her family to the States when she was 12 years old. Now, her father was a Methodist minister, and so she grew up around the church, and soon it was discovered that she had a really remarkable singing voice. She had an amazing gift, and before long she was traveling all over the place, singing and just blessing people with the gift that God had given her. Her family had sent her for singing lessons in Germany, and so she really knew what she was doing when she came back and used her voice to travel around and sing to people. In fact, she was so talented that she taught voice at certain Bible schools. Bible institutes in the States would train people up in music ministry in those days, much like they do today. And so she would teach singing to all sorts of prospective music ministers. She was really talented. And not only that, but she was a very talented writer. And she wrote many hymns and poems that were widely published. Now, one day in 1918, a friend gave Helen a pamphlet. It was like a missionary tract. And she read these words in the pamphlet, and that's where the song began. So then, turn your eyes upon him, look full into his face, and you will find that the things of earth will acquire a strange new dimness. Those words had a great impact on her. This is what she says about those words. Suddenly, as if commanded to stop and listen, I stood still, and singing in my soul and spirit was the chorus, with not one conscious moment of putting word to word to make a rhyme, or note to note to make melody. The verses were written the same week, after the usual manner of composition, but none the less dictated by the Holy Spirit. And so, amazing that these words of a pamphlet threw these amazing words of the song into her mind, it must have been a God moment. She said she doesn't know where it came from. It wasn't her own composition. The tune just came into her head with the words. God was doing something special here, I think. The song was published the same year and instantly became popular. It was published in many hymnals since and went all the way around the world. It's been translated into many different languages. And it's one that really seems to touch people's hearts. Now, Helen Lemmel died at the age of 97 after a full life of singing God's praise and writing music and poems for him. And this is a song through which she lives on. Man, I enjoy these words, and I hope that they're going to touch you today. Let's look at the wonderful lyrics she wrote. Verse 1 goes like this. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. And so she's talking about being weary and being in the darkness. Now look how both of those themes get flipped in the second two lines. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. And so when you're in the darkness, look at the Savior and you will have light. And if you're weary and burdened, look at the Savior and find life abundant and free. It's a lovely little turn halfway through that verse to explain what God does in our lives. And maybe you need to hear these words today. Maybe you are feeling weary and troubled and like you're in a time of darkness. If you would look to the Savior, look to the one who is light and who is life, he can give it to you if you fix your eyes on him. And the chorus says it, this famous chorus, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Beautiful poetry. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. This is a very biblical idea, this. She 
capture something that the biblical writers would say, fix your eyes on God, you know, turn your attention to Him. And that pamphlet she read was called Focused. So it was about where are you going to focus? Fix your eyes on Jesus and you'll find the things of the earth, the, the weariness, the trouble, the darkness grow dim as His light shines. Where are you fixing your eyes day by day, friends? Where are you fixing your mind and your heart? On Him and His light and the glory of His grace? Or on the burdens and the weariness and the darkness of the world? Oh, choose to fix your eyes on Him. Verse 2 goes like this. Through death into life everlasting He passed and we follow Him there. This is a great picture of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross but then was raised from the grave and lives on. And the great promise that he gives those who believe in him and who follow him is that they will have the same blessing. That though they die in this life, they will be raised up in a new life on the other side of the grave. Do you believe that? The rest of the verse talks about how sin has no power over us. Over us sin no more hath dominion. For more than conquerors we are. And so this is a great picture of what Jesus does for us in this life. So the first half of the verse said, after this life we will enjoy his blessing and his salvation. But in this life we also enjoy his salvation from sin. Sin has no power over us, no, no authority over us anymore when we are his. We, we are more than conquerors, not just still living in our sin but forgiven, but we are forgiven and then freed from those sins. Oh, wonderful, wonderful good news that we are more than conquerors in Christ. Then, of course, we hear the chorus again, turn your eyes upon Jesus before verse 3, which goes like this. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. And I wonder if you need to hear that today. God's word will not fail you. If he said it, you can believe it. And all will be well, even though things are difficult at times, even though there's darkness and, and weariness and trouble. His word is true. He promises to be with us. He promises to help us. He promises to give us victory over even the darkest moments in our lives. Friends, believe. Believe in his word. Are you spending time just sitting with his word and learning what it's all about? Are you spending time holding on to the promises of Jesus and believing in what he said? Oh, open your Bible and find promises from God and hang on to them. Believe in them with all your heart and all will be well. And then these last two lines say, Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. And so because we have great hope, because we know the truth that is in him, because we believe that not even death itself can take us away from him, we go and we share that with the world, a world that is dying of sin and darkness. We go and share the good news and the light of Jesus and share of his perfect salvation. This is a very sort of Wesleyan word to say perfect salvation. If you think about that old hymn, Blessed Assurance, it also talks about perfect salvation. And this is such a great truth from God's word that he saves us perfectly and we can trust in him for this and so how can we affect all this in our lives well the chorus says it's turn your eyes upon Jesus turn your eyes upon him fix your eyes on him by reading the word by praying by just knowing yourself to be held by him and friends this is the type of life that he promises us if we do a life of peace a life abundant a life in all of its fullness. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Sing it with me now and may it encourage you to do exactly that. Look full in his wonderful 
beautiful face And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace Through death into life Everlasting He passed and we follow Him there O'er us sin no more hath dominion For more than conquerors we are Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace His word shall not fail you he promised Believe Him and all will be well Then go to a world that is dying His perfect salvation to tell Turn your eyes upon Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace In the light of His glory